Hey everyone, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I just got back from my baby moon in France and Spain. Today I'm really excited to share with you my first ever pair of mules, which also happens to be my first pair of shoes from Chanel. As you know, I'm a huge fan of vintage Chanel and currently own four Chanel bags alongside Chanel couture jewelry. So it is exciting to finally sample shoes from such a fashion powerhouse. These gorgeous pearl mules are from the Chanel 2017 collection. They're a combination of black satin with black gross grain fabric. Of course, have that fabulous faux pearl embellishment, which is an absolute showstopper. My mules are a size 36 and a half with 85 millimeter heel height. For those of you who watched my Chanel leather bag review and tweed bag review, you'll know that I've dissected the history of the brand. So today we're going to skip that and focus instead on seven areas. Design, sizing, comfort, quality, accessories, my purchase story, and of course my verdict. As with all seasonal and limited edition collections, if you miss your chance to buy them new from the boutique, it can take a lot of patience to locate them again on the secondhand market. So after about a year and a half of searching, I finally found my dream new brand new on eBay US although I did have to compromise slightly on the size and the finish which I will discuss shortly thank you so much to my amazing subscribers for joining me again today I really hope you enjoy this review and I look forward to your feedback let's get into it it's incredible to think how several Chanel designs have been elevated to the status of iconic staples across everyone's wardrobe. When you think of bags, of course, it's the double flap or boy. And when you think of shoes, it's the black and cream slingbacks. Strangely for me, just like how I haven't fallen for the Chanel boy, I don't quite feel the magic with the slingbacks. On one hand, it's modest, feminine, simple, and almost works like an optical illusion with the nude merging with your skin. On the other hand, the feature black toe is so stark, to me it's almost comical like a clown nose. And if you share my plight of short legs, I don't think the modest heel height and nude does much for elongating your legs. Of course, many fashionable women pull them off beautifully. But personally, I prefer wearing classic with a twist or classic packed with personality. So the slingbacks felt just a little bit too demure for me. Now, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you'll know that my shoe collection started with sexy stilettos. And as the years passed, I've expanded into models with greater comfort that through a thicker heel has a more relaxed design suitable for casual or daytime events. I really enjoy diversifying my collection through additions such as the Louis Vuitton on star trail ankle boots, Gucci leather mid-heel loafers with faux pearl embellishments and of course as pearls came back into fashion I knew that was the last missing piece of the puzzle. Although seen today as somewhat granny chic and rather impractical, the origin of mules is highly exclusive and luxurious. First worn by elect officials in ancient Rome and then French royalty in the 18th century, the backless easy slip-on slip-off nature makes the shoe only suitable for those who live incredibly comfortable, labor-free lives. As a result, it was the shoe of choice for wealthy female aristocracy such as Marie Antoinette and Madame de Pompidou, who paired sumptuous silk mules with the most lavish ball gowns. Mules eventually lost their popularity as the lavish bedroom slipper became the shoe of choice for prostitutes in the 1860s. As mules became a sex symbol, other respectable women in society didn't want to have anything to do with them. More than a century later, mules were revived in the 1980s by Manolo Blahnik as he found them exquisite and loved the connotations of French royalty. Thanks to him, mules returned to mainstream popularity in the 1990s, although in a slightly more enclosed profile, which is less glamorous but definitely more pragmatic. Today's mule revival spoils you for choice. There's flat or arched, stiletto or block or kitten heel, rounded or pointed or open toe, in a range of leathers and fabrics with or without embellishments. As long as it's closed in the front and open in the back, it's a mule. 
Although they are not as persistently mainstream popular as loafers, I do believe mules share a number of the same benefits. They are also notorious for their comfort, the convenience of a shoe you can grab and go or remove in a flash, their relaxed elegance and versatility across your wardrobe, effortlessly elevating your outfit to the next level thanks to their inherent charm and character. I think the only major difference between mules and loafers is that as a backless heel they offer less security and they're also a bit more sensual because of the extra skin on show. Now I don't have a foot fetish but it is worth remembering that as a historical bedroom slipper there is that connotation of intimacy. Now since my feet get cold quite easily and they're also quite sweaty so I do prefer to wear socks, I knew it would take a sensational mule to convince me to join the trend. These Chanel mules were the dream shoes that I was waiting for. From the sleek black silhouette to the strings of pearls to the embroidered Chanel logo detail, I love how these shoes are so Chanel and yet they belong only to me. I don't see every single fashionista wearing these shoes the way I do with the Chanel flats or espadrilles or slingbacks. These shoes are also available in black lambskin, although mine are in fabric. It's a combination of black satin for the majority of the shoe and heel and gross grain for the toe detail to add a subtle layer of texture which further highlights the CC logo. While other Chanel shoes have featured strings of pearls in an orderly fashion, what I love here is that the rows are tightly packed, with some rows even crisscrossing so it feels like a more organic composition and luxurious in the sheer excess of the embellishments. While there is absolutely nothing natural about pearls on a shoe, here it feels like someone accidentally draped their pearl necklace over the mule and casually created timeless glamour. It's an effortless masterpiece. I am typically a size 37, but for these incredibly rare brand new shoes, I decided to take a gamble and purchase them even though they're a half size smaller than what I usually wear. Researching online, it seems that Chanel sizing seems to vary across the full spectrum depending on the shoe design. Some people say it's true to size, some run large, some run small. If you have to purchase your shoe online and you can't try them on beforehand, it really does help to pick a design which is not fully enclosed. For example, mules. So here I knew that thanks to the open back, I had flexibility and I could make it work even if it's a little bit on the smaller side. The other bit of sizing research which I undertook was I visited my Chanel boutique and I tried on a range of shoes in size 36 and a half. Since it was winter they weren't stocking any mules but when I found that I could still squeeze my feet into fully enclosed shoes then that gave me quite a bit of confidence to continue with the purchase. Ultimately, running a half size down, these shoes fit me like a glove. There is not a millimeter to spare in the length or width of the shoe. I dare say my heel even sticks out a millimeter or two too much in the back. So yes, with mules, you can definitely make a half size down work, but that would be the limit before you start looking a bit silly. For a long time now, I've collected and endured stilettos, so my expectation was that mules in comparison would open a whole new world of comfort. So far, I have not been disappointed. The 85mm heel height is high enough to give you that flattering feminine profile, but it's still a natural arch, so your feet don't feel strained or unbalanced. If you have flat feet like me, you'll actually prefer wearing heels over flats because I can't stand the feeling of no arch support. The great part about mules and loafers is that as a more relaxed design, they naturally suit non-stiletto heels. So here the extra thickness gives you day-long stability and support. For those of you who watched my Gucci loafer review, you will know that one of my qualms with comfort was that the thick block heel was so heavy it was weighing down my foot. And this got quite tiring, especially if I was power walking about. Fortunately with the mules, although they're not a light shoe, the weight is evenly distributed so they're far more ergonomic to wear. Sizing half down, the fit is super snug and perfectly molded to my foot with no pressure points, no blisters. Perhaps that's a benefit if you opt for a fabric shoe. 
I used to be concerned that an open shoe could fall off quite easily, but here that's near impossible thanks to the perfect fit. The only factor that could be improved for comfort would be the padding. While my stilettos and Gucci loafers all feature some padding underneath the heels of my feet, here the Chanel mules are just a hard flat surface. So for that reason, I would say ultimately I can last a half day in these shoes. It's no secret that Chanel has been cutting some corners on quality in the last decade. So this was another factor holding me back. Even when I was in the Chanel boutique trying on random shoes for sizing purposes, I wasn't really impressed with the way the materials or the craftsmanship felt in my hands. While a mule is a simple design, so it doesn't exactly test the limits of a fashion powerhouse, I must admit that from what I can see here, I am satisfied. There are no obvious flaws. This is my second ever fabric shoe. My Manolo Blahnik Seneca heels were my first introduction to satin, but the glossy silk satin used there, which is an extremely luxurious fabric, is quite different from the satin here. Here the fibres are dense, the texture feels hard wearing, and perhaps as a side result of their durability, the fabric itself is rather dull and doesn't quite catch the light. The gross grain fabric at the toe is similarly thick and textured to touch, and a fraction more responsive to the light. All stitching, including the decorative CC logo, is neat and precise. All leather edges are sealed cleanly. The interior stamping is tidy, the fabric is blemish free, and I love how the interior leather lining neatly hugs the exterior satin so you can't even tell it's two separate materials until you run your fingers along the leather grain. The sole is a luxurious suede leather similar to what Jimmy Choo uses, and the strings of pearls are all neatly aligned with perfectly concealed end fixing. It's very hard to tell, but I believe they use wire instead of string. But unfortunately, unlike real pearl convention, there is no knotting between individual pearls. So you do run the risk of losing an entire string of embellishments if you manage to snag the wire. This section will be short and sweet. Aside from the original gift box, I received two dust bags and the care booklet, which states Chanel luxury shoes are semi handcrafted, so most likely machine made with human finishing here and there. They provide great care instructions for all sorts of leathers and exotic skins, but unfortunately no tips on managing fabric, which is what I have here. In terms of packaging quality, I love the glossy embossed paper they use for the box, as it really comes to life under the light. The dust bags feel pretty cheap though, the cotton is scratchy and thin, the hemming looks like it's straight from a Chinese factory, and the ties seem to be the same material as what you get on sports shoe laces, complete with the plastic tips. This is ultra disappointing considering not only the premium price tag you're paying, but also the reputation of the label. If you've ever wondered whether Chanel is worth the price tag, here I believe it's pretty straightforward. No. The problem when you've fallen in love with a limited edition collection and you've missed the season it debuted in is that you're going to have to exercise patience and diligence continuously watching the pre-loved market until you cross paths again. For me that took one and a half years. Just shy of the one year mark, I found these shoes in black lambskin, which was my dream. The leather had a gorgeous patina and the CC logo detail popped visually under the light. However, they were size 39, not one but two sizes too large. I asked the seller to measure the length of the insole and it turned out to be an entire inch longer than what I could wear. I would look ridiculous like a kid playing dress up in her mom's shoes. I wondered whether I could make the shoe work if I stuffed the toes, but still the width of the shoe would be too loose, especially in an open heel mule design. Reluctantly, I returned to waiting, then finally seven months later, I found my shoes. As a proud bargain hunter, I must admit the purchase was bittersweet. They are actually priced higher than the original 2017 Chanel boutique price, they are a size smaller than my ideal, and they are fabric instead of that beautiful glossy lambskin. However, since I know just how rare these shoes are, and the difficulty of scoring them in my size, or as close to my size as I'm going to get, I knew I couldn't be too picky if I wanted the look.
The tag on the box indicates that the 2017 Canadian price was just over 1100 I purchased these shoes two years later for $12.50 plus $90 international shipping, although I did apply a $50 off eBay coupon. The total of $12.90 Canadian converts to just over $1400 Australian, which is very much the price I would pay if I was buying these shoes brand new from my local Sydney Chanel boutique. While these meals are a bittersweet purchase due to the compromise on price, size and material, ultimately I am really glad that my search is over for my dream pair of Chanel shoes, which carry all the trademark glam but remain uniquely mine. As many of you know, I do have a love-hate relationship with Chanel. On one hand, I can't deny the irresistible beauty of their classic creations, such as their legendary double flap, but on the other hand, I hate paying a fortune just to look the same like every other style enthusiast. This is the timeless dilemma, how to add iconic successes of fashion houses to your wardrobe and keep your wardrobe uniquely yours. Mules are known equally for their comfort and convenience as is their impracticality. They're impossible to wear in winter, they're ill-matched for a rushed stride which unfortunately is my default pace, and they can be misinterpreted as homeware if styled inappropriately. If it weren't for this impeccable oh so Chanel design of black and white pearls and textured fabrics, I probably wouldn't make the leap of adding mules to my collection. I do believe mules are are a fantastic alternative if you do enjoy wearing sandals but would like more coverage for colder climates or the ability for your daytime casual footwear to transition into nighttime chic. In the same way, if you enjoy wearing flats, then mules can offer you the same comfort and professional edge but with surprising charm thanks to their relaxed and bold silhouette. If you enjoy shoes which you can wear a dozen different ways from your throw-on basics to your fancy dresses, then you can't go wrong with mules in luxurious fabrics with elegant embellishments, as the simple slipper aesthetic is elevated instead into casual glamour. Well-tailored, high-quality mules can give the impression that all you did was slip on some shoes, walk outside and accidentally look fabulous. Great style can look that easy. While I would have loved this pair in glossy black lambskin and I believe that would better reveal the quality of Chanel craft, I have to admit that overall I have little to complain about the quality and make of this mule. Although the pearls are cheap plastic, I just believe they should have followed pearl crafting convention which is the individual knotting because otherwise if disaster strikes and you do snag one string, you're going to lose all of it. In an age where women's shoes are often overcomplicated with straps and buckles, it's really refreshing to have such a sophisticated pair which is so natural to wear. It works as the most polished element in your simple outfit alongside being able to hold its own weight against your fancy attire. While mules are not eternally in fashion, if you love comfort and styling versatility, look for a wow factor pair and I believe there will be plenty of opportunities for you to pull it off regardless of what the situation is with the fashion cycle. So everyone, that brings me to the end of my review of the Chanel Black Satin, Black Gross Grain and Pearl Embellishment Mules from the 17A collection. I really hope these shoes get your tick of approval and that you are excited I got my first pair of Chanel shoes and my first pair of mules. Next month, because I'm back from my Europe trip, I'm excited to share with you the goodies I picked up. I hope you guys have a great month and I'll see you again soon.